Hey, buddy. Come say hi to everyone. What do you want to tell the people, huh? You're a bit of an anxious guy. Well, right now you're very comfortable. Well, Winston here uh, gets anxious from time to time as well. So, as you can see, it happens to everyone. Anyway, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I did not realize in my last video until afterwards. Oh, bye Winston. He's a little camera shy. I didn't realize until after I had finished editing my last video that my uh, water bottle made a little cameo into uh, the entirety of the last video. So, what you getting into back there? So the uh, the perfectionist the perfectionist in me does not uh, really like that, but hey, we'll we'll go with it. So thus far on my channel, I have done a few videos, and the majority of them have been on my own personal experiences with mental health, and my focus has been on sharing my experiences with mental health from the beginning, from when my anxiety started first having a real impact on my life. And then that led to things like uh, my phobia and uh, some things that relate to OCD and depression and all sorts of stuff. And because I'm a very analytical guy and I know that a lot of people would also love to have a visual aid for uh, my experiences and what I plan on doing with future videos of the channel and the videos I've already done, I thought that I would just give you a bit of a visual of a timeline of the events and experiences I've gone through with my mental health, both positive and negative, from beginning all the way to now, all the way to the present, and just show you where we are, where I am along the timeline for my channel right now, what I've already covered in some of my videos, and what events and lessons and experiences I plan on covering in future videos, just so that you get a sense of, of where we are on the channel right now. If you're new to my channel and you see something on the timeline that I've already covered, in videos on my channel that I mention when going over the timeline, then please feel free to go back and watch those videos. And if you're already a subscriber, then you will get a glimpse into the future and the videos that I plan on doing in the future. And again, if you're new and you see some things that I've gone through that are on the timeline that you find interesting and you'd like to watch the video about those, then by all means, subscribe to the channel and just wait for that video to come out. It will be coming out soon. So enough from me, let's get to the timeline. So as you can see at the beginning of the timeline, we have uh, September, the first semester of grade 11 in high school, I had my first panic attack. Now I do have a video covering that, so you can go back and watch that. Then the next year is when I started to see some of the limitations for my anxiety and some of the escalation of my anxiety within my life. The limitations got more impactful within my life um, some examples of this that you can see, I stopped taking the bus to school, I started discussing medication, I had some uh, escalation periods with my mental health. And what you can see is actually late 2014, early 2015, I've labeled this as lost and alone. And this is the time when I was very confused, I didn't know what I was experiencing, I didn't know that it was anxiety, I didn't know what a panic attack was or that I was experiencing them, and I just felt very confused and very lost as to where I was, and I, I felt like I was the only one really going through this. Um, because as you know, if you experience issues with your mental health or struggles with your mental health, even telling other people about it can sometimes be difficult because unless they are going through the exact same thing or similar experiences, it's very hard for them to understand or it can feel that way at times. So then we move into 2016, and so I've labeled late 2015, most of 2016, to be the declining mental health with increased limitations on my life. Um, so as you can see, my mental health escalation was when I couldn't be in other people's cars or eat at school or at other people's houses. And one of the things that I put on here is that I got my driver's license and that allowed me to be able to drive and avoid public transportation a little easier. Now in 2016, we start seeing that I had a hard time staying in classrooms due to panic attacks. I had someone that I knew passed away, which I 
talked about in my previous video briefly and will cover more in the future when I'm ready. There's also the decision that I made to go on medication, my high school graduation, I put that in here because I couldn't attend my own high school graduation ceremony due to my anxiety, but two very good friends of mine drove to my house and gave me my diploma after the graduation ceremony, went out of their way to do it, and it, it meant the world to me, it made my whole night. Then we get into the rock bottom that I faced, which is to this day the lowest point of my mental health and the most impact that my mental health struggles had on my life. And that was when I was, right right around that time, I was unable to play my favorite sport, which was soccer, due to my anxiety. And during rock bottom was when I couldn't leave my house or work. I had the worst panic attack up until that point in my life, and it really had a big impact on me. At the end of 2016, we see that I do some medication trials, which go into 2017. So as you can see here, I, I went to Jordan's prom. Uh, which was a step out of my comfort zone. I went camping, which it wasn't the first time I went camping, but it was the first time that I was away from home for a whole night. And that was actually two hours away from home, which was a big deal for me at the time. Then I got an emergency medication. Then I went to college and that had some issues. Like I slept in my clothes every night due to the fear of having a panic attack and needing to go outside. So I was always dressed and I could just run out of my room. Then I went to Jordan's University for three weeks uh, during the time when we had a school professor strike at college. And then after that, I dropped out of college due to my anxiety and panic attacks and the issues that they caused being away from home. So then for the rest of 2017, I just worked and lived at home. Wasn't a whole lot going on. 2018 was a good first year at university. Um, it was also, again, living away from home, but I was going to the same university as Jordan, so I did have a really good support system with me. Then I had a rough period in 2019. I had a major panic attack at Jordan's uh, student house. I went home to see the doctor about emergency medication. After that, I was prescribed Xanax for emergencies and started taking it daily. Then eventually the Xanax was taken away and I got prescribed clonazepam and Shortly after that, I discovered that I have emetophobia, which shifted my focus because discovering my phobia changed everything. It, it really just, it gave me a target to focus on. And that's huge with mental health. I mean, if you don't know that you're going through panic attacks, then how are you supposed to resolve the issues and, and get better with coping mechanisms for panic attacks if you don't know that you're having panic attacks? It gave me a target to set my sights on and to focus on bettering myself in that area, which would result in better mental health. Then during 2020, I had ups and downs, but long-term steady improvements in my mental health. I discovered a program called the Thrive Program, which was for my phobia. And that was the first step I took in bettering myself and decreasing my phobia. I quit my job and lost a big career opportunity due to my mental health. That was a pretty big setback. I dropped out of university to pursue my full-time career. I started seeing a psychologist and began exposure therapy. Now exposure therapy was a major step towards beating my phobia. It was extremely challenging, but it was a major step that I took out of my comfort zone and a major step towards eradicating my phobia. I also started seeing a therapist just to talk about regular things in life and I found that extremely beneficial. And then driving anxiety was actually lower for most of 2020, so that was a pretty big victory for me. In 2021, in April, I actually reached the milestone of going a year without a panic attack. I still don't really know how this happened exactly, but I went from March 2020 to April 2021 without having a panic attack, which was great. Shortly after that, I uh, did go through a pretty rough period. I went through my first time being alone at home for two weeks since college. Um, Jordan was on a trip, and basically when she came back, I became more anxious and dependent on her after being alone and having such a scary experience being alone without a support system right next to me. I had a major panic attack driving back to university from home and that lasted two hours, which was unbelievably long for me. Uh, after that, I turned to CBD for anxiety and panic relief as a last resort. And then at some point in 2021 after that, Jordan actually ended up going to the hospital, which is a very major anxiety trigger for me. And I had a major panic attack that night. It was one of the toughest nights of my life when my anxiety prevented me from being there for Jordan. Luckily, I did have my brother there for me that night, and it meant the world to me. Uh, him and my mom were major support systems that night and got me through it. Then in 2022, we kind of come out of the rough, I kind of come out of the rough period and go back into the ups and downs, but long-term steady improvements with my mental health. I overcame my first panic attack alone. 
I purchased a gym membership, which is significant because for a long time I hadn't been exercising or eating right because of some of my mental health issues and lack of motivation and just all the things that can really tie into mental health and how it can affect you a lot. So purchasing that gym membership was pretty uh, important to me. Then I had a major, major challenge and huge victory for my mental health when I took my first plane flight with my friends and Jordan to Cozumel, Mexico. And then later in 2022, I actually took my second plane flight on a trip to New Brunswick in Canada. Both trips, I was stepping way out of my comfort zone. I had panic attacks. I had anxiety attacks. I had high amounts of anxiety throughout it, but I got through them and they were major milestones in improving my mental health. Closer to the present, I, I created a new dedication to overcoming my phobia because I hadn't been focusing on it enough in the past couple of years. And I just believe that I really, really, really need to focus in on it and work on it through the Thrive program and through exposure therapy until I overcome it because I believe that will be the biggest improvement in my life for right now. And so going over this for the timeline, I'd say the videos on my channel, the last video I covered was deciding to go on medication. So we're right about halfway through 2016 on this timeline. So I have covered the things between my first panic attack and my decision to go on medication. All of these events that you see there in 2015 and 2016, I have covered those on my channel so far and everything else in the future, like my medication trials, hitting rock bottom, emergency medication, going to college, all of these major events are going to be future videos that I will be covering and going over my experience with them, what I learned, and sharing my experiences with you guys about those events that have been in my life. So that is the timeline for my personal experiences with mental health from my first panic attack. Hi all the way to mm, the present and the major events that I've gone through and the experiences that I've had in life with my mental health. I definitely just want to share those with you guys because I believe that a lot of us are going through the same or similar experiences. And it's great to know that we're not alone and that other people are struggling as well and we can learn different solutions and what works and be supportive for one another. And it just makes a world of difference when you know that you're not alone because feeling confused and alone are two of the biggest issues when it comes to going through mental health struggles. And Winston knows that as well because Winston goes through a little bit of anxiety, but he knows that I have anxiety as well and we bond over it, don't we? And we help each other get through it? Yes. So that essentially is the timeline that I wanted to give you guys and just show you what I've covered so far on my channel and what I plan on covering in future videos on my channel uh, for, for the meantime. And then after those are all done, then we'll go from there. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. Thank you again. I know this is a bit of a different video. It's a bit of uh, an update. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you feel like you resonate with this stuff and you go through the same struggles and want to see more videos about mental health. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. You want to say bye? Here, you want a close-up? I'll give you a nice close-up. Do you have anything to say? There's the microphone. Anything to say? No? What about a close-up? Say bye. La-da-da. La-da-dee. La-da-da. All right. You want to edit the video with me? No? You just like to be in the spotlight? Yeah. Fair enough.